Non-British people of Reddit, what do you find odd about Britain? The amount of culinary shows on TV. When British people want to be extra mean to you, they just act super polite. Went to London for the first time a couple years ago. Had a several people say hello with, hey, you alright, which made really self-conscious until I realized it was like, hey, how are you? The constant battle for who can self-deprecate the most. From the us. I have never heard so many ways to insult someone. Bell End, Knobhead, Nance, Pedo, Plampart, SP, Edit, Plant Plot, Marty Jerk, Slag, Ya Donut also an extensive list I've heard of things you'd rather do than what's been suggested, it rather garbage in me hands and clap it rather circumcise myself with a butter knife it rather watch my mum give birth it rather have half an inch in me mum and my dad have half an inch in me. Then decide to go forwards or backwards it rather garbage in a bag and wrap it round me face and suffocate myself. Replying brilliant after every comment. Makes me wonder if they are being sarcastic or have a set a really low bar of what brilliance is. When Brits say, you wanna go for a drink, American translation, literally one drink British meaning, 10 pints, kebab and a souvenir traffic cone. Roadmen. The astonishing number of Indian restaurants all across the United Kingdom. Why everyone over there thinks I have an Uncle Bob. Their drinking culture. The tribalism in the England alone, never mind the whole UK. Liverpool to Manchester is a 45-minute drive from each other and they have completely different accents, and cultures. Over in Yorkshire it's again completely different, London is a different world, the Midlands is another whole thing. And they all appear to hate each other. As an American it amazing to study. Henry the Hoover. I lived in the UK for a few months and every vacuum I saw grinned at me with that weird face. F saying sorry for things you shouldn't be sorry for, e.g. Me, stands in Tesco looking at frozen food. Person next to me also looking at frozen food, oh sorry. Not necessarily odd, but I love how there are charity shops everywhere. Gotta love getting a bargain on books. I never quite realized it till I went there, but tea is the cure all, end all for any situation. You didn't get into the college you want? Here have some tea. You're a little groggy? Have some tea. Your arm's been lobbed off? Let's get you some tea. Why? Edit, collage to college, I'm pretty bad at spelling don't worry about it. Just did two weeks in the UK, to me, the things that seemed the oddest, were actually improvements over Canadian culture. Kids and dogs can go to pubs, cashiers at grocery stores get to sit down, roundabouts everywhere. Saying alright is a greeting. At first I didn't know how to react. I was like yeah I'm fine mate. Got a problem? The popularity of ketamine. Place names. I don't mean Coxwallop or whatever crude rural towns they have, I mean garbage like Stratford-upon-Avon. When I go to the dictionary of English place names, the very first thing that pops out to me is called Abbotskerswell. Also among the A's is Ab Kettleby, Angmering, Three Arlingtons, Ari Hirnabin and Askham in Furness. Going all the way to the end of the list, we see that the final name starting with Y is, hashtag Eastulwinarth. I think it's odd that your entire country is roughly the same size as the US state I live in, yet whenever I see pics of England there's all this open space, hills and country roads and wee villages that look lost in time, and you're still a major world power. No air conditioning is pretty weird for an American. Trains that work. Massive prices in central London. Edit, wow you people are salty about your trains. And yeah, I know it's not hot, but it is incredibly humid. Coming from California it felt like living under the ocean. As an American, the number of security cameras in public places, particularly in London. I love the difference between American and British programming, especially kitchen nightmares. British version, oh, the lobster if off, yeah? You can't serve it. You'll get someone sick. American version, it's spoiled, you donkey. You'll kill someone. Shut it down. Shut it all down. Fluff me, cue dramatic music, three jump cuts to shocked expressions, and a commercial. I'm British, but some of my American friends don't understand why my washing machine is in my kitchen. Or how I drink tea that isn't iced, admittedly that one works in reverse as well. Recently moved to England from the US, San Diego, and have been here for about a year and a half. Some weird ones, all right mate, yay dude, does it look like something's wrong, fanny pack, is not the term here. Frigid, does not mean cold. My English wife still laughs at that one. 
Spaniard here, why do you keep jumping from our balconies? Brits can never decide if they want to use the metric system or not. You measure your weight in stone, your height in feet, and your beer in pints, but you buy your produce in grams, your petrol in liters, and switch between miles and kilometers on a whim. What gives, edit, okay I get it, you don't use kilometers. But you do use centimeters, and sometimes meters. Somehow I'm even more confused than before. Spent a couple weeks in London and Edinburgh this past winter. The biggest thing was not giving my credit card to the waiter. They bring you the machine and you swipe your garbage through and it makes perfect sense but it totally put me off my game. Also, they reply, cheers, to fluffing everything and I'm unused to that. Edit, holy fluffing jegus this blew up. To clarify, I use the term swipe because I'm still unused to the insert chip terminology. Most places, as or otherwise, use the chip. Also cheers is a great word when used in the British context. Super useful, I'd like it to catch on in other places. As a Swede you would always listen and answer on a questions out of politeness such as, hello, how are you, hello, I'm fine, thank you for asking, and how are you, fine as well. Well, see you later, as a Brit you would, out of politeness, always ask how that person are but without any need to listen to the answer and get the question back and answer too. That was shocking to me first. Edit, I mean when you meet in two different directions and greet each other. No one would answer other than, fine, thanks and you, in Sweden either, but would not ask, are you alright, would in this occasion just say, hi, or, nod. Why the fluff everybody drinks so goddern much once I turned up at a spoons before 9am trying to get some breakfast. Big line outside. Door opens and I'm the only one to get food. WTF. I'm from Norway and I've lived in London for three years. I lost my voice last year, it was gone for a week, and it struck me how much you talk to strangers here out of politeness. People must have thought I was so rude for not saying, sorry, whenever I walked too close to another customer in a grocery shop that week. I've picked up the habit of saying, sorry, to everything. I once said sorry to a chair. Edit, customer not costumer. Not necessarily quirky in the sense that you probably meant with this question, but I find it a bit surreal that such a small island was able to have such a wide-ranging and expansive empire at their height. It sort of feels like if the residents of Rhode Island somehow found a way to conquer and govern all of the US and Canada. I'm Australian and find it weird that Christmas is a huge day for TV ratings. Series often have Christmas special that is a really big deal, and evening soap operas have big events and which soap gets the highest ratings is a big deal. Even though it is warmer here, in the evening we are usually inside and sometimes do retire to the living room. At my family events we might watch a Christmas movie or maybe something funny. We'd never dream of watching a soap or a TV drama. Also, the number one song at Christmas is important. Here in Australia we couldn't care less what song is number one on Christmas Day. How big your plugs are. What is up with that nasty fake tan bull garbage? So when I travel in Thailand there are always these chubby girls dressed in spandex club dresses and covered in purple makeup. They're British. The way that everyone's waiting his turn to take the bus you guys are too. Civilized. That they take their dress up codes very serious. Like legit you'll get turned away at the door if you're too casual. That their summer break is six to eight weeks. Honestly the best thing I ever heard was a black mate of my tell an American mate, don't call me African American, I'm from fluffing London. The passive aggressiveness. It was so nice to meet you, can be an insult depending on tone. What do you think of the weather, can mean, stop talking to me. As a British person, I'm going to let you guys in on a secret, the more polite we are, the more we hate you. Calling someone a jerk can be the most endearing term amongst friends. Not caring if you have something in common. When I was in grad school, I worked with a British guy and went to school with a different British guy and was like hey you are the only two British guys in this area you would want to meet. When I brought it up to each of them, they both said, fluff that guy. What's he doing in my American town, if I was in Britain I would be so thrilled to meet another American. Same with people from my state or town. There's an immediate connection. A fuse in every plug, separate taps for hot and cold water, no wall sockets in bathrooms. Where do you plug in your electric toothbrush, electric razor or hairdryer? 
I was watching very British problems on Netflix before and they discussed how every day at some workplaces someone or a group of people would stop what they are doing to make tea for the office and the make it how every likes. That seems like a huge waste of time and why can't people make their own tea? Now if I was there I wouldn't complain and would love having tea served to me but just curious about this and how common this is. Public drunkenness. That Britain has invaded almost every country. Something like every country in the world except 20 countries have been invaded by Britain at some point. Das Wild. 